Hi, my name's Steve Woodmore and back in March 2020, when the COVID pandemic hit and we entered a lockdown, because I have two serious health conditions, I have cancer and bronchiectasis, I had to give up work, I had to take early medical retirement and uh, it was great fun for about two weeks until I got bored out of my brain being at home, locked in my own little prison, keeping away from everybody. So I decided what I wanted to do was I wanted to make some videos on some subjects that were dear to my heart. The trouble is I knew nothing about making any of these videos. Nothing about the editing software, nothing about the production, nothing about anything. So I had to throw myself in and learn everything from scratch. I had to learn After Effects, I had to learn Adobe Premiere, I had to learn Adobe Audition, I had to learn how to put it all together and I had to learn how to do everything. And I thought as I'm going along the way, if I've got to learn these things, then probably somebody else wants to learn the same sort of things as I do. So I'm making a series of tutorials about the things that I've had to learn along the way. Now to do what I wanted to do in the videos that I was making, one of the things that I needed to learn was how to green screen. And this is how I green screen in Premiere Pro. I hope it helps you too. I've got my footage into my project ready to go and an early discovery I made is that the more even the lighting on your background the better the end results. Next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our effects panel is available and visible to us. Now I go over to the effects panel and I type in ultra. This should bring up the entry for ultra key. I then grab ultra key, drag it across and drop it onto the clip that I'm going to do the chroma keying with. Next I go to my ultra key entry in the effects panel and go to output and select aggressive and then select the eyedropper. I then choose a point normally around my hairline to click with the eyedropper. As you can see that's done a fairly good job of removing all of the green pixels and leaving me with a nice even black background although I do notice in the bottom left hand corner here it hasn't quite removed it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the alpha channel which is the removed area just to have a look and see how even it is looking at this in alpha channel I can now see how, how uneven it is down in the bottom left hand corner so the first control we're going to use to correct that is the most powerful control which is the pedestal control and I can't stress this enough small small movements of the pedestal control because every control affects everything else and I'm going to gradually increase it until the black is more even now I'm going to use the contrast control to remove some more of the unevenness again very small steps I'm watching the white area to make sure no black is creeping into it now I'm going to alter the midpoint to take care of the last of the unevenness. As I keep stressing, very small steps because everything affects everything else. Keep an eye on the white area when you're doing this. Now I've switched back to composite view and I'm having a good look at it. And I'm fairly happy with everything except I notice on my left arm there's a bit of fringing. And also on my right side of my face some of the green is reflecting back onto my face from the green screen. This is called spill. We're just going to correct these two using the spill control and the choke control. Okay, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to go with that. But I just have to do a couple of quick checks. I'm going to switch between the composite view and the alpha view and then back again a couple of times just to make sure that I've got rid of as much as I can do without affecting anything else. Remember, it's always little movements because every control affects everything else. You're trying to get the most even background removals you can without affecting the image you want to keep. At this point, if we want to bring in a background image, we can. Remember that the background image goes underneath the image that we've just worked on. So you have to move it up on the timeline and put the background image on the bottom. And then the magic happens, as you can see. It doesn't have to be a still image. It can be a video clip. It can be anything you bring in. Anything you bring in, as long as you put it underneath the clip we've just worked on with the ultra key, Whatever was green in your original clip, the underneath picture will show through. I normally don't bring in additional video at this point. What I do is I export the chroma keyed clip and I use it in another clip I pre-prepared. Now this is very important. If you're going to export the clip without any background, it must be exported as a QuickTime movie. You can't export it as an HVEC 
or an MP4, it must be exported as a QuickTime. So what you do is you go into your media encoder, you select QuickTime as your encoder, and then you look for the presets that say with alpha. Doesn't really matter which ones you use, as long as you use the with alpha preset. I prefer the Apple ProRes 4444 or the GoPro one with alpha, but you must export it with those alpha, otherwise it will not work as a green screen clip on your new timeline. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like bell to be notified when I release a new tutorial. See you soon.